Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over the solution to how I made this uh, little, what I'm calling the slide spot navigation menu. So we've got a uh, horizontal nav menu, which is made from an unordered list, and when the user mouses over an item, this little spot follows them along. And when I move my mouse away, the spot goes to whatever the active page is. So I'm on currently on page one. So if I jump over to page three, then this spot goes to that page, yet I still have my uh, hover, little hover technique. So I want to show you how to make this. And let's see, and jump over to my editor. There's the HTML for one of the pages. There's the CSS. Let me just go ahead and delete all that. It makes it too easy. Jump back over to Chrome and refresh, and there's the there's the the blank page. I'll head over to page one. So each page, it's a little five page website, and obviously that's a generic thing. You could practice this just with a couple pages, but it's an unordered list making the navigation menu, and I've got a little head, headline on there just to keep our indication is going. So each of the HTML files is pretty similar. Um, I've got doc type definition for HTML5, HTML tag lang language attribute, character encoding meta, I've got a title for my pages and whatnot. Um, each of the bodies of the page does have a unique ID, okay? And I'm doing that for the active page indication. So, for instance, my home page, page one, has ID page one, page two has ID page two. So this is in the body tag, and it's there to uniquely identify each of my pages. And there's a couple ways this can be done, but that's the way I'm doing it. Here's a headline one to identify the page. And then of course, all the pages have an identical navigation menu. I'm using a nav tag that's uniquely identified. And within that, there's uh, an unordered list. Each list item is uniquely identified. The anchor tags, of course, point to their respective pages. I do have some span text in here, which is technically not necessary for my end result. Um, I had that in there when I was doing an initial experiment, trying something a little bit different, and I forgot to take that out. So the span is not necessary for this feature. And then I've got my closing list items. And of course, here's the trick down here at the bottom of my unordered list, but it is in my unordered list. So this little blob here is a child of my unordered list element, just as my list items are children. So that's in there, and basically it's an empty span that's been classified as blob, and that's how I make that little disk. So that's the HTML involved. So basically you want to just go ahead and knock out five pages. I can zoom out on this real quick. Pretty simple looking. Knock out a page doing this. Copy and paste it. Make five individual pages, or two individual pages, or ten. Depends on how big of an experiment you want to make. The most important thing, though, is that, of course, the navigation menu is well structured using an unordered list, list items. List items are uniquely identified, and don't forget your little uh, span blob in there. You could use a div for that, too, but I used a span. And this is also important, too. The bodies of my pages are uniquely identified. So page one is identified as page one, page two is identified as page two, and so on. Once we've got that, we're going to head over and start working on the style sheet. There's already a link tag in my pages that refer to the style sheet, but since my style sheet is blank, my page, of course, is unformatted. So we're going to tackle these one by one in order to create our desired result. I'm going to go ahead and start off with a, uh, a reset rule. And let me zoom in a little bit more. That's nice and big for you. So this is going to be my reset rule. I'm going to set all margins to zero, all padding to zero. And what the hell, let's go ahead and do all borders set to zero. Okay, so that's my reset rule. And remember, just putting in a reset rule is a nice tool for keeping things consistent. Let me jump back over to Chrome, and as I refresh, there we go. So that's the result of all margins and padding and borders set to zero. All right, next on the list is I want to control my nav menu. Specifically, the unordered list that's within my nav menu. And don't forget that on my HTML, I am using a nav tag that's uniquely identified, but really I want to manipulate the unordered list inside of it. So you might argue, well, why not just identify the unordered list? Certainly could do that. Nothing wrong with it. I'm just trying to use this uh, new nav tag a little bit more often. So. 
the unordered list here within my navigation. And I'm going to do a couple things to it. Now some of these numbers that I'm going to throw out, for instance width uh, 475 pixels, um, I've already put this together of course so you saw it working. So some of these numbers I just got by trial and error and just tweaking different numbers. So don't put a lot of uh, don't put a lot of concern and oh wow is this number necessary to get it to work. This is just controlling the width of my unordered list. In addition to setting the width I'm going to go ahead and set the height about 60 pixels. So these are just numbers that I've determined that look pretty decent for my demo. And I'll go ahead and set the margin to um, 50 picks auto and this will center my unordered list on the page. So as I make a few changes here, the newer you are to CSS, then the less you'll type before you do a save browser refresh. So I've made a few changes here. I could always jump back over to my Chrome browser and refresh just to start to see the difference. Okay. I've got a ton of windows open so all right so back over here on my code so in addition to these changes I'm also going to go ahead and do um, list style type none to get rid of those um, bullets don't want those bullets on my unordered list could have also done this on the list items as well but I'm going to take care of it right there on the unordered list in addition to those I'm going to go ahead and put in a little border effect just so we can see things a little bit more clearly It's a light gray border. Position relative. You wouldn't notice anything resulting from position relative, but that's a pretty important declaration for this unordered list rule. Remember my HTML, my unordered list contains a number of things. It contains list items, but more importantly, it contains that blob span, okay, that disk, my visual indicator. And I'm going to be positioning this blob absolutely to do that, I want to have my net, my unordered list position as relative. It's going to make positioning that blob a lot easier. And I'll go ahead and do a font family and a little border radius. I'm using that border radius a lot more lately, so 10 pixels. All right, so I've made a few changes. Head back over to Chrome, refresh and you can just see the faint gray outline of that unordered list and when you're working on this kind of stuff you can't worry about things you haven't messed with yet we haven't messed with any of the list items so don't be put off that they're over here okay I'm only controlling the unordered list which is the container for those list items so I'm kind of working from the outside in next on the agenda is to actually manipulate those list items so I could say look my nav nav menu list items so these are the list items that are within my nav menu. Let me go ahead and scroll this up a little bit. Not too high. I want you to be able to see everything. So for my list items, I'm going to go ahead and do Let's see. Let's do a float left. Width 95 pixels. Height 45 pixels. And um, that's actually pretty good right there. There might be a couple other things I do, but let me go ahead and just put these all in one line so everything fits nice and neat. So float left, width, and height. And let me save this. And just that little change right there is going to get my list items side by side. That float left takes care of that. And let me go ahead and point something else out to you too. It's really only going to, you're only going to notice once I have some borders on there. So I'm going to put some temporary red borders on those list items. Save that. Refresh. There we go. Now because of the borders, they didn't all have room to fit um, side by side. So let me just go ahead and make this code just a little of this unordered list a little bit wider. We'll just change that up to 480. It's probably not going to be enough still, but not quite. So head back over. Forty-five. See how that looks. 
There we go. What I wanted to point out is that my list items are right next to each other. They're touching. That's actually going to play an important role later on. So my list items are touching. Okay. So the borders make it easy to realize that. If I get rid of those borders, just take those borders out, save and refresh. The borders aren't there, but you just need to remember that those list items are actually touching each other. And let's see, let's actually do one more thing on here. I'm just going to do a little bit of a... Nah, that's good for now. Let's just keep it at that. Nav, nav menu, anchors. Okay, now I want to manipulate the anchors within my list items. And this is a pretty important step for any navigation menu. I'm going to make my anchor tags into block elements. Normally they're inline elements, but I like to make my anchor tags block elements most of the time because that can let, that'll let me size them width and height and it'll make them rectangle shape. It makes the anchor tags behave more like buttons. So I'm going to display them as block. I'm going to set their width and their height to about 45 pixels. By the way, I am using numbers just a little bit narrower than my list items. Okay, I'll explain why in just a second. And let's see, I will float these. Actually, that's not going to be necessary. Don't need to do that. And yeah, let's just see how that's looking. Just a couple little changes. To make this a little bit more noticeable, yeah, let's go ahead and throw some borders in before I test, really. And what else can we do? How about a little uh, border radius? Let's see how that's looking. Okay, so now you can start to see the anchor tags. And you'll notice as soon as I put my little pointer right on any part of the anchor tag, which is this large rectangular button now, I get the link action. I don't have to actually mouse over the text. And of course, that behavior is occurring because my anchors are block elements. Okay, a couple more things on here. Text align center. Text decoration none. Font size, 14 pixels. Line height of 45. Actually, I'm going to do 25 pixels. And I'm going to knock down the height on these to 25 pixels. I want the height to be smaller than my list items. Just to help this stand out to you, let me put that border back in. So I'm going to put that border back on my list items, and then I'm going to make my anchors noticeably smaller than the list items. So basically now when I head over here and uh, refresh, you can see that the anchors are definitely smaller. Now I would like these to kind of center up just a little bit. So I'm going to head back over to my editor. And for my list items, I'm going to do a little margin top, about 5 pixels. And I'm also going to do a little bit of margin for my anchors, too. 10 pixels top and bottom, 5 pixels left and right. So I'm kind of forcing that my anchor tags to be centered within my list items. Okay. Well, once again, my list items are touching, but my anchor tags don't have to. And this is going to allow me to control that little disk, that little blob, when I hover over my list items. And there's never a point to where I'm not hovering over a list item because they're right next to each other. I think I'm going to go ahead and pause this video here, and I'll pick it up in a part two video.